So I praise him for what he's done, but I worship him because of who he is. Amen. We've got to get this right because the battle is stirring. I'm, I'm telling you, the battle is stirring. You, get, you just got through a battle, and, and, and angels have to accompany you like what he did with Jesus because you're about to go through another one. It's just that there, there is a, a level of comfort with the Spirit of God, man, that makes the challenge, uh, you know, where you're not vulnerable to it. You're able to go through it. ready to go deep. How many of you are ready to go deep? Yeah. Amen. The deep calls unto the deep. You know, God is not looking for us to stay at on the, uh, the shallow. He's not looking for us to stay at the top and swim. All the beauty is beneath, deep, deep, deep beneath in the deep depth of the water. And uh, the Spirit of God takes us into deep places the deep places deals with a great deal of surrender. And, and I'm praying, God, God, don't let us, I don't know about you, but I pray prayers like, God, don't let me live my life in vain, thinking that I've surrendered all and I only gave you 10%. Hello. I, I don't want to, I don't want to be before, stand before God in the last day and God said, I came to you many times to deal with some of your issues and you excuse them as if uh, my love was greater than your sin and the, to the degree that uh, it would forgive you just because I loved you. How many of you know that it's easy to think that because God loves you, you can get a pass and that's not the case. Real grace leads to holiness and the bible says holiness without shall no man see the lord it's impossible to see god without having surrendered your life and it's impossible to worship him without having to surrender to the spirit of god and so when you worship it deals with us surrendering and giving our all to jesus and so this this night, I believe God's going to give us a revelation of 2019 worship that's going to help us deal with warfare. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I started off a little bit on, on, on uh, watch night service that God wants his people to have an incredible exposure to the realities of his world. Remember, God's world isn't where it's vacant. He wants us to be there with him. That's why he's prepared for us a seat. If you can turn me down a little bit, I'm getting my echoes again. If you, the, it, it, he, he, he prepared for us a seat in heavenly places. He didn't just give you things on the earth. He gave you a seat in heaven. And it's, it's, it's ironic that you find so many so-called Christians who still think that somehow they could do what they want, when they want, and how they want, and still get past or get past that pearl, gate of pearl. And I know that's not the case, and I don't want you to be deceived. I want the Spirit of God to minister to you tonight greatly. Uh, but as I shared, God wants us to get a glimpse, not just a glimpse, but to have incredible exposure to his world so that we see everything that he has prepared for us. Because he said, I've given you all things richly to enjoy. And so one of the things about the reali realities of God is that there's a way that you tap into it. God wants us to have an astonishing reality of the will of God for our lives. We always talk about the will of God, but do we quite understand how to surrender to the will of God? I know that God has a will for my life, but I don't want to be in his permissive will. Anybody know what permissive will is? There's a thing called 
perfect will and another one called permissive will. We think because we can be in the permissive will of God that everything is okay because nothing is happening to us. The, per the permissive will of God just allows us to dwell in the place of grace. The perfect will of God is that you're following the leading of the Spirit of God. And the Bible says that you'll be his disciple or you'll be one of his sons because as many that are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. Amen. Jesus even made it plain when they came and said, uh, 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 your brother, your mother, your father, your, or your, your brothers and sisters are out there with your mother. And Jesus said, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, let me tell you who my real brothers and sisters are. He said, those who do the will of my Father. Amen. So why is it important? Because the will of God must be done in order to obtain the promise. God's will is an enigma. It's, it's a secret. It's, it's nothing that's clearly stated and pointed out other than the only way we can do it or get to the point where it's done is being led by the Spirit of God. And when you're led by the Spirit of God, you are not led by your flesh nor your mental capacity, and you're not led by others. And you'll be surprised how many Christians live their lives being led by other people. Are you listening to me? Jesus came along who is perfect theology and a perfect manifestation of the Father. And so our Heavenly Father had not even been seen or even could have been, have been imagined before Jesus came on the earth. Because when he came, Jesus came to reveal the Father to us and who the Father really was. And that's why he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He is perfect theology. Perfect. And so many things, many things that we were believed and we we, we practice, or those before us practice in the Old Testament, were not carried over into the New Testament because Jesus came as a clarification of the Father. He came to express who the Father is to us and his nature to us. The ones Jesus came to reveal himself to didn't accept him and believe him, and so therefore they could not see the Father. You can't see the Father if you don't believe in Jesus. Jesus said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. Amen. So Jesus came to illustrate that the mercy of God was greater than the devastation of sin. The Old Testament deals with the gravity of sin, but the New Testament shifts to the gentleness and God's mercy about sin. God is quick to forgive you for your sins. Are you listening? But he wants you to grow into maturity. In the Old Testament, a leper, as I said before, a leper uh, couldn't even show the priest himself to the priest until he was cleansed. He couldn't even show up in the city. Jesus comes along, which is a different expression of the same truth, but it's a greater truth. And a, and a leper comes along, and the Bible says he came worshiping. And he said, Lord, if you will, you can heal me. And Jesus said, I will. And he laid his hands on him. Because worship will expose you to doing the will of God. Are you listening? The moment he say, came worshiping, he said, if you will, God exposed his will. Some of us need to get that. He touched him because he knew that that was his will. So the New Testament has a superior re revelation than the Old Testament. It's more superior. There are levels of revelation in Scripture, and there, are, there, there is some truth that is greater uh, uh, dispensationally and dimensionally in truth. That you've got truth on different levels, and yet they're truth. Whatever happened in the Old Testament doesn't mean that it wasn't truth. It was just another side of that truth when we got to the New Testament, which we're living in. And so where certain things happened in the Old Testament, 
like you couldn't eat pork, a better revelation came along that everything that God made was clean and it was good for consumption. Are you hearing me? So the natural world and the supernatural world are parallel worlds with one world being greater in dimension than the other one. God is looking at us and waiting on us to become supernatural people. But most of us are so carnal minded that we're no spiritual good. Are you hearing me? God likes to build on, on, on a sense of his revelation of how worship is done spiritually on earth and then show us aspects of his world in which no earthly parallel. You see, worship in heaven is different than it is here. Are you all hearing me? It's far greater, and yet the Spirit of God allows us to transcend the limits of our worship here as we learn to worship by God or by in the Spirit of God. And so every revelation of his nature is designed to build in us affection for the Father and his world, that you want to be where he is. You ought to want to be where he is. That's why the Bible says in Colossians 3 and 2, he said set, that word set means in the, in the Greek means to arrange, to prioritize, to position, and here's a better word, to deposit your affection. Meaning your mindset, the thoughts of fondness towards God, your love towards God. He means to arrange or deposit your affection towards God on things above, not on things of the earth. Meaning make God your affection. Affection is required in worship, people. And worship is required for release. Let me say that again. Affection is required for worship, and worship is required for release. That's why the man came worshiping, and God released something. You see, my ability to walk away from things that can fracture my, my walk with God is, 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 is God strengthens me through worship. Worship is exchange. Somebody say worship is exchange. What I release in worship, God released to me from heaven. Satan understands this because he, he was once a worshiper of God. He understands it all too clear. And if you remember when Satan was tempting Jesus, he took him on the, one of the last temptations. He took him on, on top of a mountain and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, if you'll just bow down, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world if you'll just bow down and worship me. You see, Satan knew that because he understood the response of worship is exchange. Are you listening to me? That's why Jesus never questioned what Satan said because he knew that all that was over the earth was his. He owned the market of the world. And he had a right to exchange his worship for that market. Don't you hear people doing that? I made a deal with the devil to get this. You see, the world's market was in Satan's power. So to give these kingdoms to whomever he wishes, it was his desire. Satan knew that worship equals acquisition. That's another one. Write that down. If you don't have a, anything to write on, type it in your notes, in your phone. Worship equals acquisition because he wanted to be worshipped too. Satan knew that the way God did things, he's got to do it like that because I, he said, I want to be worshipped too. So he said, if you worship me, I'll give you this. How many of you know when you worship God, God gives you everything? Now you can't stay where you are when you worship because you, when you worship, you, you transcend normal limits. When you worship 
God will speed you into another dimension and bless you. I mean, ultimately, just pour out to you. There's a woman that came in the book of Matthew, and you may know her. It's, it's in several other books as well. And this woman was a Canaanite woman. It says, and she came to Jesus, and she said, Jesus, my daughter is, is vexed with a spirit, and I need you to deliver her. And Jesus said not a single word. He didn't say a single word. The disciples started saying to her, well, let's, let's get rid of this woman because Jesus wasn't saying anything. And Jesus knew that that would interrupt what he was about to do. So he said something. He said, I cannot give to dogs what is meant for the children of Israel, what's meant for the children. And the Bible says she came worshiping. That changed the dynamics of the request. Even though she was not a Jewish woman, it changed the dynamics and sped up the dispensation in which she was in. She, 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 she was in the dispensation where she had to wait till the Lamb of God had to die in order to get bread that was meant for the children. What was the bread meant for the children? The healing. The deliverance, was that not what she was requesting? Absolutely. You see, a lot of stuff is meant for you that you don't get. Not because he didn't give it to you, it's because you don't see it and you don't know how to believe for it. But I'm telling you tonight that there's going to be a release in worship. Amen. Amen. And that woman got what she wanted because all of a sudden, Jesus knew that when she came worshiping, not only did it change the game, but he had to get approval from heaven. And God said, she just broke the rule. We got to give it to her. So the crumbs that was meant that she said she could eat from, she never got to eat the crumbs. She ate the bread. We read the story like she, and, and make the, put the emphasis like she's, been, she's eating the crumbs. No, no, no. The bread God gave to her because she came worshiping. Amen. Angels will move like lightning when you worship and when worship is in effect. And this is why warfare always requires some form of worship because of the exchange that's in, in the process. That's why you'll see when you read uh, 2 Corinthians 20, the 20th chapter that Joseph had said, put the musicians ahead, because he knew that worship sets the mold for warfare. We know that we're worshiping God, but while we're worshiping God, somebody's got to be in battle for us because we're focused on him. Somebody's got to have our back. Mm. Worship means to lie prostrate. But it also means to kiss or affection. Worship, as I said before, is the highest form of intimacy with God. Worship is based on relationship and should always be demonstrative of affection. Please hear me. Where there is no show of affection, there is no impression in a person's heart. That means that they have no real relationship to relate to God. And intimacy and intimacy without genuine affection is rape. Mm. Rape is getting something without the approval to release it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You see, this is why worship is more than songs. A lot of folks think they're just singing and worshiping that way. No, worship is more than songs. It's more than spoken words. How I worship is how I believe. And, and what I believe determines how I worship. 
And so it is important to know who we worship and how do we worship who we worship. Because worship is so important to God, God doesn't give us the luxury of worshiping him how we feel. God is sovereign. So we can't praise him, we cannot praise him and worship him how we feel. So don't let somebody tell you, well, you know, you worship God in your own way. That is, that's not biblical, it's not true, and it's a lie of the enemy because the enemy doesn't want you to worship the way God wants you to worship him because he knows the moment you worship him, angels will be released to do battle against him and expose him for who he is. <laughs> We need the aid of the Holy Spirit to worship, to help us to worship. Just as the Bible says, you don't know how to pray as you ought. And I can hear people saying, oh, I know how to pray. No, you don't. You do not know how to pray. The Bible says you don't know how to pray as you ought. The greatest preacher don't know how to pray as he ought. Amen. Amen. I don't care if you've been saved a hundred years, you still don't know how to pray as you ought. And if you can't pray as you ought to, the way you should, you certainly won't know how to worship him. <laughs> oh, I know how to pray. Yeah, you'll read a prayer and that's your prayer. That's why when the Spirit of God gives you what to pray, it's nothing close to what you want to pray. Amen. You'll be stuck on bless mommy, bless daddy, change the whole world and put the, and I thank you for the whole world in your hand, God. God will have you interceding for, for the one you don't like. Amen. Because you don't know that intercession for that person will make you free. That's why you don't know what to pray for. <laughs> you need the aid of the Holy Spirit. If there, if there was anything we need to get for 2019, it would be how to worship God this year. Worship is one of those things that you can do it with anybody or anything, but if you do it with God, it better be done right. You see, you can worship people, you can worship cars, you can worship money, that's your right. It's not biblical, but that's your right. You wanna be an idiot and worship a pencil, it's up to you. But you can, you can worship anybody or anything however you like, but when it comes to God, you do not have the luxury of preference yes. to worship God how you want to. Well, I'm white and I don't, I don't want to be so emotional. We're not, white people aren't that emotional. That's a lie. I don't want to be this and I, want, I don't want to be so expressive and I don't want to be that and I don't want to be that. You misunderstand the whole truth about worship. This is probably why you have a lot of relationships going sour. Because a person who doesn't know how to express their affection in the bedroom will struggle in the chamber room with God. Okay, y'all don't want to hear the truth. Amen. If, if there is need to get anything right, and make it right, right now is worship. Yes. Yes. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you better show some affection. Amen. You better act like it feels good. You better. You better. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Uh, don't let me have to get deep into that. I, Lord, take me away from that, please. Don't, don't let me go there. Uh, don't let me go there, Lord. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Glory to God. You see, God can do all things but lie. But another thing he cannot do is he cannot worship himself. This is one of the reasons why Jesus said that the Father is seeking 
seeking such to worship him. God knows who he is, but he loves to hear who you say he is. That's the expression, that's the relation you have to, and the feeling and the fondness and the love you have in your heart towards him that you, even though you're short on words and vocabulary, you still try to figure out how to say things to him. Uh, 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 if you, when your worship is real, how many of you know sometimes you are reduced to tears and a, a repetitive, I love you, I love you, God. Ah, la, 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 la. Ah, you start talking in tongues, say, I la, 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 love you. <laughs> I la, 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 love you. I la, la, love you. <laughs> the Father is seeking. I cannot worship myself, God says, but I, I have someone that I've created for my pleasure. If you and I were created for his pleasure, that means that we can't do it how we want. But yet we do it based on our will to yield. Y'all didn't get the rhyme in there? I rhyme, so give me a dime. Anyway, the, the will, <laughs> he, there's, there's a will submitted here so that your worship can become channeled towards the right person. Have you ever found yourself worshiping God and you interrupted your own worship by saying something and praying for your children when you're supposed to be worshiping? Just think about having intimacy with your spouse. And in the middle you say, I wonder how the kids are. Oh, yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. You're laughing. <laughs> you see, you need the Holy Spirit to aid you in worship. And according to 1 Corinthians 12 and 3, he says, no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. You can't even call him Lord. You may be able to say it, but it won't mean anything. But that, in other words, it won't resonate anything. But when the Spirit of God connects you and links you to the Father, when you say, I love you, it is meant that you love him. And that's why sometimes you don't know why and how. You just know you're connected. Amen. The Bible says over in John, the fourth chapter, the 24th verse, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Now, he said God is spirit with a capital S. And then he says those who worship him must worship him in spirit, lowercase s, and truth. Truth is not just word. It is the sincerity of our hearts that we worship. We worship God without the expectation of receiving from him. But God doesn't receive worship without affection to give to you and I that you and I need something. So I praise him for what he's done, but I worship him because of who he is. Amen. We've got to get this right because the battle is stirring. I'm, I'm telling you the battle is stirring. You, get, you just got through a battle and, and, and angels have to accompany you like what he did with Jesus because you're about to go through another one. Doesn't mean that it's going to be so war-torn and, you, you know, you're seeing bombs. It's just that there, there is a, a level of comfort with the Spirit of God, <laughs> amen, that makes the challenge, uh, you know, where you're not vulnerable to it. You're able to go through it because after Jesus settled the issue of who is worthy to receive worship, Jesus said to the devil when the devil came to him and he had said all of these things and he said, man, I'm, get out of my face, Satan. It, I, it is written that I should worship the Lord my God. Only him shall I serve. And the Bible says 
that the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Why? Because you just, when you just get through a battle, you've been prepared for the next one. You see, your last battle always prepares you for your next battle. So tonight I want to, to settle the issue of worship and worship. Yeah, I got that. War, they, W A R, worship and worship. Go ahead and turn your Bibles over to John, the fourth chapter. Again, we're, we're going to point out something here. Mm. I got to be cautious of my time. I have some Alamogordians here, and I, I got to get them on the road. 